Hello, everybody, and welcome to your latest transfer news show at the Red Men TV. My name's Dan Cup. I will be your host for this one, and we have got a lot of news to talk about. Before we get into the many midfielders Liverpool have been linked with over the past 24 hours since the arrival of Jörg Schmadke, who has been a particularly busy man, I want to let you guys know that if you've already popped a comment in our live chat, then please repost it, because any comments made before you see my face on the screen, I can't see. So please get involved. Let me know your opinions on the midfielders as we go along. Like I say, we have got many to talk about, so I'm not going to waste too much time before getting into it because we're all busy people. Um, I am especially busy today. So yeah, let's get stuck into it. The first one I want to talk to you all about is Manu Kone. Liverpool have reportedly begun talks with the management of Manu Kone. Now, this was brought to us by Toby Altschaffel from Sport Bill, but it's also been reiterated by his colleague, Christian Falk, the ever-reliable Christian Falk. He has stated that, that news is true. Liverpool have started transfer talks with the management of Manu Kone. Bush is a glad back player, of course. He could be the alternative for Jude Bellingham. So, yeah. Let's talk about him a little bit. Uh, 22 year old midfielder, um, French under 21 international, I believe. Uh, very exciting prospect, and Liverpool need midfielders. Now, before we go any further, I do want to let you know that in about half an hour's time, I will be speaking to the man who broke that news, Toby Alchaffel, over on Red Men Plus. And today is the final day for you to use our amazing offer. If you go over there, Head to the sign-up page, use code YEAR as a club captain yearly subscriber, and you will get that for half price. Now, as deals go, that is a belter. That is an absolute belter. And speaking of deals, yeah, this this report suggests that we'll be looking to pay in the region of €40 million Euros for Kone. Um, a player who, listen, I'm not going to pretend I know absolutely everything about, but a player who seems to fit and tick many boxes um, that Liverpool will require this window because we all know we're in desperate need for midfielders. He looks pretty versatile in terms of the fact that he's played defensive midfield and there's a normal sort of box-to-box -box type midfielder. And I think Liverpool need to fill some holes. We need some cover for Fabinho as well. So he certainly fits that bill. Um, yeah, I want to wanna go into some comments now. Let's do that. Nyaxi. There's Kony's clips that he's seen. Reminds him of Cater before we bought him. Um, he's had a fair few injuries. Yeah, I did check his injury record this morning. It's not horrendous. Um, you'd obviously like it to be better. But, I mean, it, you'd like to imagine that the people behind the scenes at Liverpool, obviously Jörg Schmadke being one of them now, having been appointed yesterday, you'd like to imagine they're doing their homework and they're really sort of doubling down on the injury thing because having gotten rid of Naby Keita, who you referenced there, and I tend to agree with you in terms of stylistically, there are similarities between the two. Hopefully, if he does become a Liverpool player, there aren't similarities between the two in terms of how much time they spend in the physio room because we simply cannot have another Naby Keita on our hands. That would be an absolute nightmare, quite frankly. So... Go for some more comments before I give you my opinion on him. I want to get you guys to see what you think. Um, yeah, Chris Hunter, somebody else I want to talk about, two other people I want to talk about in a second, believes the summer transfer window of McAllister, Turam and Kone will be absolutely clash. Yeah, I want to get your opinions on what would be the ideal summer because, like I say, we have been linked with a number of midfielders. It seems like Schmadke has walked through the door and gone, right, let's get going then because he literally got announced at 10 o'clock yesterday morning and then sort of by the time I was going to bed last night, we were solidly linked with four different midfielders. Um, the Kone stuff seems, well, the McAllister stuff's probably the most advanced and sort of the most concrete. But in terms of our admiration for a player, out of the ones I'm going to talk about, Kone seems the most realistic to me. And in terms of reporters, I mean, sport build in Germany, reporting about a player that plays in Germany, it doesn't get much more reliable than that. They describe the interest from Liverpool as being real and big. So it does appear that Liverpool are definitely keen on the player. Um, and that aforementioned £35 million, £40 million pound mark seems like a bit of a bargain, if I'm going to be honest. He's under contract at Munch and Gladbach until 2025. He plays all the time for them, essentially. He did only get one goal and one assist in the Bundesliga this season gone, which suggests, in terms of his style, he's a bit more of a, a destroyer, like that defensive-minded midfielder. He's not necessarily always getting involved in the final third of the pitch, but I think... 
given the attacking prowess we already possess in the likes of Jota, Nunes, Mohamed Salah, obviously Cody Gakpo, Luis Diaz. Um, I don't think we necessarily need goals from midfield. Um, obviously, chipping in would be handy, but let's face it, our defensive attributes in midfield this season just absolutely deserted us. So, signing someone of Kone's ilk um, and energy might just be the answer to all our problems. Who knows? Want to get some more opinions. Um, Living the Dream says... Why didn't they just go for Kone or half of the players linked in the January window? Yeah, uh, the January window was an interesting one because we obviously ended up signing Cody Gakpo, another attacking option. Now, I feel like we did that to sort of beat the queue to sign Cody Gakpo because I think Tottenham were keen, Manchester United were obviously interested. So I think we just went, let's get him, probably knowing that Bobby Firmino was going to leave. So we felt like we had to get that replacement through the door already. Now, I do agree with you. We obviously needed midfield reinforcements when it was quite apparent that Artemella wasn't the answer to any question that's ever been asked, apart from who only plays 14 minutes of football for Liverpool this season. He is the answer to that. But yeah, listen, we did need midfield reinforcements in January, absolutely. Why we didn't move for them, I'm not sure. But listen, there's probably loads of reasons as to why. I think with this one, the Coney one in particular, in terms of, like I've already said, in terms of his style, in terms of the way he plays, he does look like a Jurgen Klopp midfielder to me. Now, I've got a lot more research to do on him. I've got a lot more to watch of him. I've got more people to speak to him, speak about him with. So I'll know a lot more very soon. But just from what the little I have seen, he does seem to make a lot of sense. And I know Munch and Gladbach are in a position whereby, and it's weird because they're in the same position when we were linked with Florian Newhouse a couple of years ago. They're in a position whereby they need to sell some players. And I think the, the report from Sport Build essentially says it's obvious that he will leave this summer. And let's face it, Liverpool like picking up those kind of players, like players that need other clubs need to get off the books, they need to cash in on. Um, we're very, very good at that. So, yeah, I want to read a couple more comments before I move on to our next player. Um, Kone was decent for um, Toby Lerone. Not only have you got the best name, but that is some comment. Kone was decent for everything. He grew his hair and changed the position, but you always liked him. Nicely done. Nicely done. I grew his hair is an understatement. Like, that lad has... Fully, fully green hair. Um, I want to bring up this comment before I move on um, from the real Kyle Jones. He thinks we need two Premier League proven midfielders and then sign Kone or Turan. That's an interesting one because I know Neil Jones, who comes in obviously every week for our journal insight, he's been adamant that Liverpool will be essentially looking predominantly in the market for Premier League proven players, which obviously makes sense. There's no to less adaptation period. You obviously have to learn how Liverpool play and how Klopp wants you to play, but in terms of the league itself, you already know it. So that would make a lot of sense in terms of a quick fix for Liverpool. And obviously McAllister does fit that particular bill. But then on the other side of that, you just appointed a sporting director in Jörg Schmadger, who obviously is German, but has only operated inside the Bundesliga. Like, his whole career, whether it be playing, management, or as a sporting director, is all inside the Bundesliga. So it stands to reason that we would start being linked with Bundesliga players, perhaps even signing Bundesliga players. And, obviously, Manu Kone is one of them. So, yeah, I think in terms of him, it's definitely a watch-this-space situation still. Nothing's done. There's talks have begun, which is, you know, relatively advanced, you'd have to say. Liverpool are clearly keen on the play. I think Neil Jones himself actually doubled down on Liverpool's interest in Kone after these initial reports last night. Romano spoken about it. All the big hitters have spoken about it. And yeah, it looks like Liverpool will be at least actively pursuing Busher Munch and Gladbach midfielder Manu Kone, who, as one final point I do want to say, is six foot one, so physically possesses what we're looking for, very Fabinho esque in that sense. And also, I believe, will be participating in the under 21 European Championship. So it's going to be happening very, very soon. So yeah, anyway, next. Another Frenchman, and um, this one comes from Le Keep this time, and this is brought to you by myself and Get French Football News, because they reiterated the news that Liverpool have opened negotiations to sign Nice. The temptation to say Nice there was unbelievable. To sign Nice midfielder Kefrem Turam, another 22 year old, and as I say, this comes from another reputable outlet in Le Keep. Um, yeah, so the Reds have definitely been busy, haven't they? Let's be honest. Um, and the report this time says the Reds, didn't say the Reds, that's my words, it's that Liverpool have taken steps to sign the Nice midfielder. Um, and reports are suggesting 
on the back of that as well, that he's another player that we are interested in. Neil Jones kind of reiterated that stance. I think the the eye catching thing in this potential one is that he would be more like I think it's around the fifty million mark that the keep report says, and we don't know what Liverpool's budget is. Even Jörg Schmadke himself said yesterday he doesn't know what Liverpool's budget is. He doesn't know what his budget is rather. And I think if you start getting upwards of fifty million for someone as well as perhaps McAllister, as well as a defender we know that we need. You need three midfields and a defender. If they're all above 50 million, suddenly you're 200 million deep and, you know, are we really going to go and do that? I'm not quite sure. Anyway, I want to get some opinions on Turan before I give you mine. Again, oh, Martin Davis says, I've got to bring this one up, sorry. Why don't we just pay the 45 million for Neves at Wolves? There's a few reasons why, for me. I, I think he's a good footballer. I think he's a good player. And I think... If he was to arrive at Liverpool, I think most of us would be fine with that. I, I'm just not convinced he has he has what it takes to be a Liverpool footballer. I'm really not. I think again, you know, long range shooting is a thing that always springs to mind, isn't it? With with Ruben Neves, but I just I don't know if he's got the engine for it. He's very Yuri Tielemans for me. He's got a better engine than Yuri Tielemans. Don't get me wrong. And I think when I've seen a couple of people in the chat sort of suggesting Tielemans for free would make sense. I, I can't I can't be with you on that. I apologise. I can't be with you. Um, Gerson Gorseb says, Taram, Kone and McAllister will be just perfect. Yeah, I want to get your opinions on what will be your perfect summer. You can start throwing them in the chat now. Um, as a spoiler alert, I'm going to talk about, obviously, Duncone. I'm going to do in Taram now. Bruno Gimaraes is the next one I want to speak about. And then Alexis McAllister, who is seemingly edging closer and closer towards becoming a Liverpool player. So... Let's carry on. Um, yeah, somebody agrees with me on Ruben Neves. Somebody, I think it's Albi Narf, says Neves is overrated. Yeah, he, he probably is overrated. Um, I think that's probably a fair way of putting it, to be honest. But I, I, I think he's a good, like I said, I do think he's a good player. I just don't think he's a Liverpool player. I think he, if he's not at his level, his level is only slightly above where he is now, potentially. Sort of maybe Europa League footballer. Um, which I know we currently are, which sounds really stupid, but it's a ridiculous thing to say that was. But a long-term Europa League footballer, God, forgive me. I, I, it's not. It's hard to take. It clearly hasn't sunk in just yet. Oh, we're in Europa League. Anyway, Tomba, Lavia is no good. Yeah, I haven't mentioned Romeo Lavia, another player Liverpool are keen on. Um, but yeah, he at the minute seems to have gone quite, quite, yeah. I like this comment. I want to bring this one up. Mr. J Mango says, Lavia already knows how to find Jota with a pass, so why not? Yeah, it was a belted assist. Like, he clearly, he's seen the reports linking him with Liverpool and thought, I can uh, cash in on this right now. Here we go. Finally, a good two transfers, Turam and Kone. Clearly, Russell Stubbley, you are a fan of the two Frenchmen the Reds have been linked with. So, I'll give you my opinion on Turam just quickly. Like I said earlier, 52 million, around 50 million mark is a lot of money to pay for a footballer still. Under contract until 2025. Nice aren't in financial trouble in terms of needing to sell him. Um, again, similar to Kone, what Taram offers is he's played a lot of football as a defensive midfielder. He's also played a lot of football as your conventional number eight. He got two goals and four assists last season in Liga. And what also he is, and you can't really read a report on Kefrem Taram without seeing the fact he's six foot four. So, what he offers in terms of that is obvious height. And I think one of the stronger points that Fabinho has offered us um, in recent years has been the fact that he has been so commanded in the air and almost to get over him and get at our defence, you have got to beat him. And to beat him aerially has been really difficult and he's almost stopped attacks. As much as he stopped attacks defensively with his tackling sense, it's been aerially as well. So Turan would offer that to us. I don't. I always have concerns with Liga because I don't know how great a barometer it is in terms of signings, because it's not the strongest league in the world, as we know, like PSG win it all the time. And don't get me wrong, you could obviously say that about the Premier League right now in Manchester City. So I've now contradicted myself with the Europa League stuff and Liga and the Premier League. But I don't know, I feel like in terms of quality, it's not quite there. So when you're looking at Taram's performances, to stack them up against you know Premier League midfielders and other midfielders we're linked with, I think it's difficult. Anyway, I want to bring up a super chat. Thank you very much. Two, it's going to 
close up there. To Jadon Granville, much appreciated, seven ninety nine Aussie dollars. Um, tell me where you're in Australia from as well when you get a chance, because I love Australia and spent six months in Melbourne once. Um, for some reason, he's kind of based for a big shock sign that we won't hear about until the hours before and that nobody expects, and he'd love it. Give you Joshua Kimmich. Now, I would bite your hand off for Joshua Kimmich, let me tell you. That would be a completely different conversation if we were talking about him. Um, yeah, it's interesting you, you you actually raise that because I know Bayern at the minute, I don't think Kimmich necessarily is among this, but I know there's some Benjamin Pavard exit rumours. Obviously, Sadio Mane exit rumour remains strong as well from Bayern Munich. So despite winning the Bundesliga for the millionth time in a row, uh, it feels to me like things aren't all good there. I know Oliver Kahn is on his way out as well. So there might well be a couple of Bayern Munich players, you know, on the market this summer, let's say. And listen, if Joshua Kimmich was one of them, Liverpool should be all over him. And again, it comes back to my point about Jörg Schmadke earlier. Like, I think it's inevitable that we will be exploring the Bundesliga market. Anyone who thinks we're just going to stick around and just target Premier League players, now we've got Schmadke in the building, I think that's going to end up being wrong, quite frankly. Um, yeah, somebody says, anyway. Let's read this. People just talk about good French players now. There's been some good French players. Like if we, if that's the debate in the chat, there has definitely been some good French footballers. Zinedine Zidane knew what he was doing with ball at his feet. Let me tell you. Um, Shukbe Shekhan says there's not much real talent around. Any decent players are just so overvalued. There's so few all-round players you can do a bit of everything. Yeah, I tend to agree with you. I actually, think Kone and Saram, you know, especially Kone for the sort of players we're talking about for him. I actually think he's the type of player who does fit that bill in terms of you can do a little bit of everything. He feels like a pretty complete midfielder to me. So in that sense, he would make a lot of sense. But I agree with you on being overvalued. Like the money we're talking about for some of these footballers now is just insane. Like to come back to Lavia, I mean, I know City have got that buyback clause in place, which I think is 50 million. And the Southampton kind of want that regardless of who comes and gets him. It might be 40 million and they want 50, whichever way around it is. Like, Good season, don't get me wrong, and still incredibly young. I think he's 20 still, maybe even 19. Incredibly young, brilliantly talented footballer. You know, recently become a Belgian international, but he's had one good season in the side that got relegated, and they're talking £50 million. Like, the world's gone mad. The footballing world has gone fully mad. Hen Q, I want to bring up your chat just there. Yeah. To Ram as a perfect injury record, which we need. Yeah, absolutely. Like I said earlier, on the back of allowing Naby Keita to go. And let's be honest about it. Like, in terms of quality, somebody referenced before what we've seen from Keita when we signed him. And it took a year for him to arrive, obviously. Like, he could play football. He was a Liverpool footballer in terms of his ability, in terms of what he offered to the team. He was tailor-made for Jurgen Klopp and what we were doing. The problem was he just couldn't stay fit. <laughs> let's be honest about it. And there weren't really signs of that before we signed him, if we're going to be honest. So... I suppose you can only take the injury record at face value, but I do agree with the point, Hank, here in terms of right now, Kefrem Taram does have a very good injury record and therefore should definitely be a plus point. And maybe it does make you pay the extra bit of money because you get that bit of a surety in terms of you know you can count on him. Who knows? Um, Dom Lear asked me, I assume you're talking about French footballers in this. And you know what? I mean, Canate, obviously, is the one right now. Um, Bruno Shevu, I would struggle to put in the good category. Somebody here says, I don't want to get too sidetracked because I am pushed for time, but Letalek and Pongol, yeah, they weren't they weren't top French players at all. Let's be honest. Um, Tom Matthews picks up about the point about Liga not necessarily being the strongest. And you know what? Even though I said it earlier on, like, yeah, I get it. And Liverpool, Liverpool do such due diligence on their signings. I don't think it'll matter too much. The Bundesliga, again, is another essentially one club winning league. Like, again, Bayern Munich win the league this year, despite Dortmund having it in their own hands, essentially, on the final day. Um, and yeah, I think you might be right, Tom. It just provides a platform for the conveyor belt of young French town. And yeah, I mean, France as a, as a nation have been absolutely tearing it up in recent years, haven't they, quite frankly. So signing French young French lads can only be a positive thing, I guess. So, I mean, there's two of them in Kone and Saram. Like I say, I just wonder whether it was down to one or the other. You would edge towards Kone, perhaps, because he's cheaper. He's played in the Bundesliga. It's a league that Klopp will know better. It's a league that Schmadke will know better. Yeah. Let's see. Anyway, I will move on because I've got two more players to get through very quickly. 
The first of which is a player we know better, I think it's probably fair to say, than the first two. And it is Bruno Guimaraes. Um, according to goal sources, both Liverpool and Barcelona have started negotiations with Newcastle over Bruno Guimaraes. Now, I won't dwell on this one too much because for me, it feels relatively cut and dry in terms of, listen, we all know what he offers. He's a fantastic footballer. He makes so much sense for Liverpool. Like, If he was in a Newcastle side of years gone by that finished... 10th in the Premier League, like I'd be saying, yeah, go and get him. Because Liverpool have in the past developed the habit of picking up players from inside the Premier League, generally when they've been relegated in terms of Andy Robertson and Gina Maradaldum, of course, from Newcastle. But players who've done well in the league, they obviously know the league, we've seen them firsthand, we know what they're all about, and we go and sign them. Now, again, Gimme Rice is, makes perfect sense in terms of that. But for what Newcastle now are, and for where Newcastle now are in terms of they are probably the richest club in world football, if not the definitely one of, and they're in the Champions League. Like, you could still probably convince Gimmer Rice himself that, to make the move to Liverpool because we are a Liverpool football club. However, I don't think you convince Newcastle to sell him, um, and that would be a huge stumbling block, of course. In that one, I might be wrong, and listen, if I am wrong, great because he makes so much sense. He's 25, he's in the prime of his career, whereas the other two lads we're talking about are still very young and they've still got room to develop, etc. Ten times capped by Brazil, offers absolutely loads in terms of attack and defence. The perfect midfielder for what Liverpool need right now, quite frankly. Like I say, I just think getting him out of Newcastle will be proper difficult. Really difficult. Uh, Russell Stubbly makes something. Yeah, Bruno Gimmerich will be incredible. He would be incredible. I, I, I can't really add much more to what I've already said on him in terms of I think he'd be a brilliant signing. I just struggle. Uh, people are making a point about Anelka as well. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. He was good, but we should have signed him. Should have signed him permanently, permanently rather. On loan was uh, not what it was all about. And Zlatan Ibra says, "Forget it. He is not coming." I'm guess you're talking about Bruno Guimaraes, and I make you right. AJ even says the same thing. Essentially, yeah, not happening. Next, I will move on very quickly. Um, just want to see a couple more comments before I do. There's ever a world where Kone and Taram join with McAllister. Yeah, Deck Perry, I would love that. That I mentioned earlier on about sort of the perfect summer window, given the players we've been linked through already. I think that might be it, personally. Um, I want to talk about what mid Liverpool's midfield options would look like. I'll wrap up with that right at the very end. But listen, if we can go and get all three of them, I'd be over the moon, quite frankly. You get Kone for the 35 million that I've spoken about, Taram for around the 50, hopefully knock it down a little bit. What are you then? You're sort of 80 million deep, potentially. McAllister, I think we're looking at sort of the 60 million man mark, pound mark, under 40 million quid. And then you can go and get a centre half as well, plus the money you're going to get in from selling players. Yeah, sign me up for that, York Schmadke. I hope he's watching. If you can sign me up for that right now, I'd be made up with that. Yeah, people are making the point about Gimme Mike's not going anywhere. Hank Hugh says he's too unrealistic. I won't bring up all the comments because. I think all of us are pretty much in agreement. Alex says there's no way Newcastle will entertain offers, especially not the kind of offers we'd be able to make. Yeah, I agree, quite frankly. Um, and I am wasting my time talking about it. I agree with that too. I did kind of make a note that if we were to go and really push for Gimmer Rice, he'd be way over the £50 mark, which again, I don't think we're in the market for right now. We obviously backed out the Bellingham deal for very similar reasons. Because we need more than one footballer. Um, so we're not really likely to entertain Bruno Gimmer Rice for me. Um, Dave says, if Schmadke is watching, just want to read this one before we move on to our last player. Oh no, I've missed the comment. There we go. Sorry, that wasn't the comment I wanted. Here we go. If Schmadke is watching, bro, I won't, yeah, I wouldn't call him bro. Use Carvalho to enable a Gvardiol or Solosby deal, please. Yeah, I'd be up for that. I mean, I don't know how much of Gvardiol's fee. Fabio Carvalho would knock off. But listen, I'm all for it. Let's try it. I feel like it'd be a drop in the ocean for what we need to spend on Gvardio, but here we are. I, I admire your optimism. Anyway, final one, and this is a very quick one just to finish before I do sort of wrap up on what Liverpool could look like next season. This is Alexis McAllister. Liverpool and Alexis McAllister hope to finalise all the details of his transfer in the next week. They want the deal to be done quickly. Now, that is brought to you by Transfer News Live via The Source, which is Matej Moretto. Um, yeah, this deal, listen, I think we're all kind of expecting this deal to be done very promptly. Other reports from Argentina, who are leading the charge on this McAllister's Liverpool deal, have suggested Liverpool want it done before the 10th of June, which is 
a matter of 10 days away, essentially. That's before the transfer window even opens. So who knows? We could be getting some pre-agreements in place. We could be getting some, you know, images of Mikhail's to hold in the Liverpool shirt. Not necessarily up in front of a Christmas tree because it is June in a minute. Maybe in front of like a sun lounger when he's away on holiday, perhaps in Buenos Aires. The McAllister deal seems very likely at this point to me. Now, things happen. Doesn't always happen. Doesn't always happen the way it should, but who knows? Um, it looks like a good start to the transfer window, though, if we do end up getting McAllister for me. Um, Jai 10 makes the point he could be our new number 10. I won't dwell too much on McAllister because you've heard a lot of us talking about him. I think he suits us really well. I think he's sort of the finished Curtis Jones article. And it just allows Curtis Jones to continue to learn, develop, without necessarily being our first choice. I think McAllister comes in in front of him and Curtis Jones can look up to him and say, yeah, in two years' time, I'm taking your spot, mate. But I think we needed someone to come in straight away and be that plug-and-play, ready-to-go Premier League footballer. And McAllister is that. Anyway, just want to wrap up by saying, just this last comment before I do, Beardy. Beardy briefly central says McAllister and Taram in the midfield is perfect in a class centre back and we are done. I think we need one more midfielder to that. I agree with you in terms of the two names and the fact we need a centre back, but I think we need one more midfielder as well as that. Anyway, very finally, we've spoken about Manu Kone, we've spoken about Kefem Taram, we've spoken about Bruno Gimarais a little bit, not going to happen, and we've spoken about Alexis McAllister. So, if we were to get Three of those, i.e. Kone, Taram and McAllister, I would be over the moon. Absolutely over the moon. Because that would leave Liverpool with a midfield department essentially next season of Jordan Henderson, Fabinho, Thiago, Curtis Jones, Harvey Elliott and Stefan Bajcetic, plus the three I've just mentioned. Sound. Absolutely sound. Like, put them in whatever order you want and start them as a first choice front three in whatever order you like. I'm not bothered. I'm not bothered because that is strength in depth that we have been severely lacking all season. We've got Europa League football, Carabao Cup, FA Cup, and of course Premier League. You know, start Jones, Elliot, and Potestic in the midfield three in the Europa League group stages and the Carabao Cup third round. Sound, whatever. Rotate Henderson, Fabinho, and Thiago with McAllister, Kone, and Saram in the Premier League. Sound. Happy days. Yeah. Sign me up for that. York Smadka, if you are watching, go and get those footballers for us, please. Won't cost you that much money. I've just told you it's going to be under 40 million. Then you've got money left over for a centre back. Go and get it done. Um, yeah. I don't want to say any more. I'm quite happy, I think. I'm just going to go for some very quick comments before I leave it because I do need to speak to Toby Alchaffle, like I told you earlier, Sport Build reporter who initially gave us the Manu, Manu Kone news. Um, people asking if Kone is a central defensive midfielder. He's done that a lot. He has done that a hell of a lot. He played, like I said, conventional number eight as well as CDM, like FM Saram has. And I think that versatility is really important for us, quite frankly, because I think too many times this season we were left without a Fabinho understudy in terms of it was meant to be Bacetic, it was Bacetic for a bit. He then gets injured. Henderson's needs to play in the eight because we haven't got eights available. It just becomes a mess. Signing someone like Kone or Taram or both and allowing them or having them available to play both roles is pivotal to me. Absolutely pivotal. And I want to finish on this comment because it seems like somebody's agreeing with me. Feels like somebody's agreeing with me. Which doesn't happen all the time, so I'm going to finish with this one, Alex. Got a bit of everything in that group of players. Yeah, hope you're right. And that group of players, again, I'll just read it out to you. Jordan Henson, Fabinho, Thiago, Curtis Jones, Harvey Elliott, Stefan Bajcetic, plus Kefem Taram, Manu Kone, and Alexis McAllister. Give it to me. Just honestly... Like, the transfer window can end then and there. Maybe with a centre-half. Go and get Evan and Dicker for free. You can mind track Frankfurt as well. Or if you've got the money, go and get a Grodiel, because that would be better. Or Levi Colwell. Anyway, I'm just saying names now out loud. I do need to leave you. But before I do, I want to tell you all that today is the very final day to sign up as a club captain yearly subscriber over on Redmen Plus. And if you use the code YEAR, you'll get that for half price. Today isn't the final day to do it exclusively, but it is the final day to get half price. So you know what to do. Get over to Redmen Plus. Get on the club captain yearly subscription. Use the code YEAR. It will be half price. That's massive. And there's so much on there already. I covered George Schmadke like you wouldn't believe this. I essentially know everything about that man. I know more about him than he knows about himself. Let's put it that way. And I'm literally three minutes away from speaking to the man from Sport Build who broke the Manu Kone news, Toby Alchaffel. So it has been a pleasure speaking to you, as always. I apologise I have to rush you a couple of them, but 
It's busy times at Liverpool Football Club, quite frankly, which means it's busy times for us here at Red Men. But we have got you covered, as ever, from every possible angle. So, yeah, all it leaves me to say is go and sign Kone, go and sign Taram, go and sign McAllister. Bruno Gimmerangs is not going to happen, unfortunately. It's been a pleasure. I'll see you again soon. Take it easy. Hey everyone, hope you enjoyed that show. Do you want to get your hands on some amazing Liverpool merchandise? Well, if you become a Red Men Plus Club legend on a yearly subscription, we'll instantly send you two merch codes to get you two pieces of merchandise from redmenmerch.com. T-shirts are amazing. Go and get yourselves one. Simply become a Red Men Plus Club legend on a yearly subscription and that code will be in your inbox very, very shortly.